Okay, so today we're gonna do another pyrography image on a Man Lake box. I've got my boxes together and my last one is still disassembled and that's a perfect time to do something on the end. We've got some bee suits here for my grandson, little tiny one, and we're collecting things of course for spring. We still have snow. I invested in this little fan that uh, will take the smoke away from my face and eyes while I'm doing pyrography. I highly recommend one of those. And we have a lot of different burning tips here, which are from Razor Tip. And uh, in this project, we're only going to use three of them. Now, this is the end of a brood box, so I thought it would be cool to put a queen honeybee on it. So I looked at Bee Culture Magazine here, and I thought I would show you my reference sheet again. If you don't have this magazine, it might be good to subscribe to it if you're into bees. There's the queen right there on this A Closer Look Basic Honeybee Biology book that... Uh, they're selling here through the magazine, but I thought I would reference this image right here for my bee box. And keep it handy the whole time, of course. You can get sheets from coloring books or anything you want to trace out onto your wooden ware that you're going to do your pyrography on. Um, I do a pencil sketch and then I copy it with graphite here. And then uh, you can use a pen to transfer the graphite lines to your box, try to make it a little bit dramatic, maybe even exaggerate some of the angles and bends and contours because you want to make something striking that's going to be out in the weather in your apiary, which is the case with this box. So again, close look, queen bee, and I figured that's appropriate again for a brood box where she's going to be laying most of her eggs. Now, Man Lake doesn't care about the project I'm doing. I have nothing to do with them, but I did buy the box where from them so I thought I'd give them a shout out here. I get nothing for referencing them. So now we're going to turn on this uh, Opalar um, USB charged um, fan. It's totally quiet and it's better don't blow it straight on your work. It cools down the tips. Blow it away so it draws air away and across your work. Razor tip again. Here's my power pack and we're starting with the ball tip. So I'm going to kick that on. We're a little over a 6 here on the dial. And we're going to go right in like I always do and uh, start off with the eyes. They're going to be the darkest part. We can talk, I suppose, a little bit about uh, the role of the queen honeybee. And uh, if you don't already know, there is generally one queen per colony in a hive. Sometimes there are sister queens that are attending to the same hive and laying eggs in the same colony. But uh, it's rare. Generally, there's just one. And every worker bee in that colony comes from that queen. So I think it's appropriate to put her here on the box. And I made it nice and big so that uh, it'll be kind of dramatic and we want lots of contrast. Again, it's going to be outside. This one I'm not going to color. I'm just going to clear coat this with a few layers before we go outside. And uh, I've spent... Uh, a good part of the early part of 2018 here gluing up and uh, finishing boxes that are going to go out in the apiary so this year we're going to have a lot of uh, wood burning and uh, images on the sides of the boxes that uh, are kind of fun to look at better than just uh, painting the boxes which is what I used to do now we're uh, putting pyrography images on them and then we're going to uh, just clear coat them and see how they weather so again, when we get to the, we're working on the forelimbs here, generally do an outline and then I work in from the edges and leave just the highlight areas. So you might want to, uh, again, be kind of dramatic. You don't have to be realistic. You can uh, just make it high contrast, like what we're doing here. And any areas that you don't touch with the burner, of course, they're left as the highlights. And we know that some of these limbs are actually pretty flat and they're really not uh, tube shaped, but uh, I like to exaggerate the contours a little bit because it makes it kind of stand out on the box. And the box we're working on here is pine. And it's the middle grade of pine that Man Lake provides. Again, they're not sponsoring me. They did not give me a discount. Uh, I just bought them like everyone else. And here on the antenna, I'm just kind of pushing in stipple dots, which from a distance it will look like those are the segments of the antenna. And here again on the right forelimb, we're just going to leave some highlights there and darken the rest. 
and we bring it up of course it's attached to the thorax of the queen which is nice and round generally and uh, the queen thorax is often pretty void of uh, hairs sometimes they're just really shiny and dark and then we go to these little segments here on the very delicate ends of the forearms and uh, they almost look like little hearts there at the end and then there are of course the hooks that the queen uses to hang on to things now we'll just start to build up from the neck area and uh, darken it just little circular patterns and we'll start to work up the shape of the head now I know that uh, the bees have uh, five eyes the two large prominent compound eyes on either side and then there are generally three in between I know there's only two here illustrated but uh, again we're not trying to overdo the accuracy just trying to indicate that there is something else there and the acilla I believe they're called is uh, what they use to really pick out contrast in light and dark and you'll see them tipping their heads side to side as they they see and discriminate better the physical position of things that they're flying towards and a little light spot there right between the uh, head and the um, thorax there sometimes you see this neck tissue as they tip their head forward even the worker bees have that and so I decided I would just leave that in there there's also when you look at the wing muscles that are on either side there's always this U shape that follows underneath um, where the wing muscles are and where the wings are attached and uh, so that's going to be prominent it's kind of a dark area again we're just going to really gradually work up starting from dark to light until we indicate the physical form of this part of the queen bee and again when I go over some of that uh, raised wood grain there you'll notice that the sap rises up and sizzles a little bit there so again you just keep going and look at the smoke rolling off being drawn away by that fan uh, the last time I did one of these smoke went right up into my eyes and I really had to get something to remove the smoke from the project so that it wouldn't blow up in my face and I also kind of got tired of sniffing the fumes from cedar and uh, pine the next project I'll be doing after this one of course is going to be on the new uh, flow hive the flow hive 2 and I'll be decorating that box before I put a sealer on it and put that out in the apiary so if you're interested in that also um, I'll be working more with queens this year and uh, we'll be demonstrating how to make new queens in your apiary and how to set up new colonies of bees people have asked me to show more of the basic uh, practices in the backyard uh, apiary so we're going to do that and of course this is the right forelimb now we're looking at the abdomen of the queen remember that uh, the abdomen is really large on a queen and that's because uh, she's carrying all of her eggs in there and uh, you really want to see a nice large heavy looking queen she'll be laying a lot of eggs after she's done her maiden flight and mates with around 11 different drones she'll come back to the colony with uh, fertile eggs and enough to last her lifetime which is generally several years now we're going to switch to this knife blade design and we're going to use this to uh, establish or indicate hairs on the legs and abdomen and thorax and of course the head of this bee so again this is a part where it's going to take a lot of time I'm just going to demonstrate the technique really quickly here and of course not make you sit and watch me do every hair on this bee but uh, queens, workers, and drones, of course, are covered head to toe in these fine hairs. And uh, it's just up to you how much time you're going to spend developing that. Remember, in this case anyway, it's just going to be outside in the weather. I'm sure this box is going to turn gray. I'm sure this bee is going to fade. But because it is burned wood, uh, it should last quite a long time, much better than just paint. And look at, you can see the grain of the wood here and how it went through the legs here and kind of left a, a striping effect. And that's because the heat burns the wood easily in the light colored areas, but where the growth rings are, it does not burn it so readily. So it leaves those areas lighter. I think that's an interesting pattern. Not a pattern you'd actually find on a bee, but I think it's interesting, so I'm going to leave it. And now I'm going to a shading spoon. 
This is a flat one. I have others that are dished out and they're somewhat convex. I prefer the flat one. And this is where we're really going to build up the contrast even more and just work the shading right over all the hairlines that we've put on the bee. And you can see I've done most of that work now. And we've got nice hairy legs for the queen. And we're just going to darken things up here. And don't forget that when you're looking through the wings that it's somewhat translucent, so you leave those areas lighter. And then uh, once you're satisfied with how, how much darkness and how much shade you've put into it, don't forget to leave it alone. You can very easily overwork and burn too much on one of these projects. So you kind of need to get the forms down, get the shadowing in there, and then uh, learn to put your tools down and just let it go. Again, remember, you know, you're just, you're just burning wood that's on a bee box. It's going to be out in the bee yard, and it, it will be interesting for people that look at your beehives because these will be unique. And uh, it does indent into the wood quite a bit. So I think uh, it's interesting. You know, as I said in the past, I just painted the boxes. Now I'm doing pyrography and putting little custom details on them. And it's going to be interesting to see how it goes outside. So if you're doing this, it'd be cool to see uh, and hear about what you're doing. If you've got a pyrograph pyrography project and you want others to look at it, feel free to put a link down in the comments section. I'll put uh, links in the description to the things that are used here. And of course, when you finish your work, don't forget to sign it. And I do highly recommend that you have a fan when you're doing this. I can't believe I worked without one for these past three or four projects. And then just put the date on it, and that will help you know when you set these boxes out in your bee yard too, so it's practical. And I appreciate you watching this project.